I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Last man in the last row. I can't hear you. Louder. Rule number one for innovation. Listen to the final consumers and communicate. This is the problem here in Portugal, and not only here. There are lots of innovation which are not coming to you, to us. But before this, let me tell you that I'm so old, so old, that I shouldn't be only a dinosaur. I should be a tree nosaur, three million years old. And this is what I'm going to talk about, about the old innovations, about 30, 20, 30 years old, which only now come to you, to us. But before that, let me tell you that I've been working in 12 different countries. And please, let me tell you, okay, that Portugal is the best country in the world. Portugal has the best... <laughs> Portugal has the best gastronomy in the world. Portugal has the best wines in the world. Portugal has a wonderful nature, a rich culture in a very small country. And Portugal has the unique, the most sympathetic people in the whole world. Thank you, Portugal. <laughs> I'll very shortly talk about the future of tourism, about innovations, about old innovations which are not coming to you only now, about excellent uh, technical products, and so on. Very shortly. Please. Okay, what the future of tourism is, it's no longer about destinations, it's about emotions. As you explained, as you felt today, what people really need is not only to come to a site where you have old buildings, but what those buildings are communicating. What are they telling? People want to feel. What do they want to feel? happiness, emotions. And this you cannot give with only old buildings. They are a key, but you have to enter a path, a path where you, the most sympathetic people in the world, can do a large difference, a big difference, because the sympathy, a smile, knowledge, feeling for other people, empathy, this is what they need. So, number one, emotions. Number two, what they have now is very high expectations. They have been to many other countries. They have seen lots of things. So they expect a lot from you. And this is what we have to know, which are the expectations. So we have to focus on niches, because people don't want anymore to be one of 1,000 in a destination. They want, they want to be treated as Jack, John, Pedro, Maria, Cristina, as you want. So we have to develop a tourism which is no longer for a mass tourism, but for small niches. And the uh, integration of culture, of sun, beach, swim, golf, this is what they expect. They are not only coming for golf, they are coming for many other things together. Because what others said today, it's the integration of many different things which makes a difference. What else? Fair business. More and more, you, the young people, the future of tourism, want fair business. It was the time when pirates would be taking the best part of the cake and leaving almost nothing for the others. You expect, and I expect, tourism of the future to be fair business. 
where everyone will have a part of the cake. We don't want misery just to have low prices, low costs for us. We want all of them to have dignity, to have a, a nice life. And then we enjoy not only materially, but even our soul will feel better. And we know that people are willing, no, okay. Innovation exists for a very long time ago. If I'm talking about transportation, be your guess. I remember, no, I wasn't born. But my father remember uh, during the war uh, when uh, northern part of Sweden, of the Nordic countries, did not have fuel. They used rests of forests to transform it into biogas. Electricity. We have wind turbines for a long time ago. That's very, very old. That's from the time of the Egyptians. They used the wind in order to make, to pump water, for instance. And we have lots of energy in the seas. You just heard about the seas. The waves of the seas can be used to provide energy. And we had here in the north of Portugal, in Viana do Castelo, the first trial all over Europe amongst 97 different sites that were surveyed. It was in Viana do Castelo and then in uh, just north of Oporto, where they installed a few prototypes. The results were 30% of energy above their expectations. But it, because of certain interests, that was not continued. And nowadays, there are new techniques. I could tell lots about those techniques. But I won't have the time. I just wrote a book, which is called Entrepreneuring Sustainable Tourism. It's mainly about sustainable development. In this book, you have lots of examples all over the world where they are using other sources of energy. Now, the future of tourism, as I said, is mainly focusing on uh, new technologies, but also on what people expect. And uh, this book, The Future of Tourism, in English, is about it. OK. Next, water. We can very easily and very cheaply uh, have a, a gadget which costs about uh, two euros, less than that, to mix water with air. And you have the same feeling as it was only water, and you save lots of water. Building, positioning the building, adobe constructions, and so on. There are lots of techniques, and we are talking about techniques which are about 100 years old. Come on. Old innovations, as I said, be your gas. Do you know what we do be your gas of? What we use? For about 30 years ago, uh, people in the countryside, farmers, were using sewage of animals and mixing with rests of their fields in order to produce biogas, and that was mainly for heating. Today, most of the large cities in the Nordic countries are using sewage, excuse me, shit, in order to make energy for us. But we here are not using them. Why not? We solve at the same problem, at the same time, a problem of etar, of dejects, of uh, sewage, making energy. It's a long, long procedure. Everyone knows how to do it, and it's cheap. As I mentioned, vegetable oil. There are some people who believe that we are using edible oil in order to produce fuel. Bullshit. We are using, or it's possible to use, non 
edible oil in order to have it as fuel. And that is perfect. It's zero pollution. And we are, this way, developing the countryside. We are giving opportunity to small farmers to sell their products, then keeping them in the countryside. It's wonderful, but it's not used. What else? Ethanol. Brazil and the Philippines, since 73, 1973, it's almost 30 years ago, when they used uh, uh, mainly uh, melas in order to produce ethanol. Nowadays, the Nordic countries are using lots of ethanol and uh, mixing it with small portions of uh, gasoline in order to have it as fuel. What else? Solar cooling. Already in 1980, Israel were using solar energy in order to do cooling in large hospitals. I visit them. I'm so old, I visit them. What else? Electric cars. It seems as something new. Finland had electrical cars since at least 25 years. And in uh, London, there have been uh, milk distribution since 51, 1951 by electrical vans. Nothing new. So, excellent high-tech products, which are available anytime you want. Solar heating and cooling. There are lots of experiments, lots of products, which are available. It's a matter of if we wish to use them. Very quickly, quick trains. TGV is a completely, completely old technique. The new technique is called light alpha. It's mainly uh, a train which is pending and uh, which has no locomotive. It's very, very light, made of composite and uh, high strength steel. Everyone in my business know them, but it's not used. So, next. Finally, okay, saving money. There are lots of techniques where you can not only save the planet, but also save your pocket. But what's amazing is that you need to make a revolution. As there is no interest in governments in general and in companies to let you use the new techniques. Because if we are saving energy, if we are saving packaging, if we are saving everything, the gross national product will go down. Quality of life will go up, but, quality, but the gross national product will go down. So, they are not interested. Finally, the final. The future of tourism is up to you, up to us, in order to really put your money where there will be fair business, where you will have your expectations satisfied. Innovations exist, yes. We have, we have to tell the people that we want the new innovations and no old innovations as TGV. <laughs> Let's use them. There are excellent products in the market, and I specify in my books, especially Como Sair da Crise, How to Beat the Crisis. Here there is a list of the products which are the market, and what we can do in order to change the market, in order to make those who have the power, who do not want you and us to develop, so that they can start putting those products in the market. And finally, yes, I trust you. Yes, we can change. Yes, we can, together. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.